day, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Captain Jeff Sylvia, and I'm here to explain different uh, plotting techniques using different tools. I know that some of you may feel uh, slightly intimidated with some of the things. First tool I'd like to mention is the roll bar. Roll bar has advantages and disadvantages. Um, advantage, easy to use, and they don't slip very much. The next thing we have is the parallel rulers. Parallel rulers, again, easy to use. They do have a slip. And another disadvantage, though, they do have a bevel on here, which I'll explain later on how that's a disadvantage. The next thing we have are triangles. Triangles, uh, I can't think of any disadvantages with these guys. Uh, we use them, uh, they're very versatile. At first, they may be a little clumsy to you. However, uh, you'll soon see their major advantage over the other two uh, pieces of equipment that I mentioned. All right, so we're going to go to the chart. All right, so here we are on the chart, and what we want to do is lay a course of 030. What we have here is a plotting sheet just for ease of seeing things. So the first thing we're going to do, we're going to set up our slide bar to 030, and we see Oh no, it doesn't reach. So what do we do? We need some sort of a straight edge. Maybe I'll grab a parallel ruler and slide it up here, up against the roll bar, move the roll bar, and then slide the roll bar over and strike my line of 030. A bit clumsy possibility that uh, things could slip. Not bad, however, there is a better way. Alrighty, now let's try it with the parallel ruler. So here we have the parallel ruler you all know how to use. So we come over to 030 again. And now we've got to move our, with our parallel ruler. Oh no, we're going that way. So I guess I've got to do this, and then this, and it slipped. Ah, i got to start over. So we start over. Because the old saying is, if you think it slipped, it did. So we got to parallel all the way up again. And now we draw a line. This is where I was talking about the bevel. Some people, they sit down and plot, which is fine. But the bevel will cause a parallax. As you look down, the only way to fight that parallax of the bevel in the parallel ruler is to actually stand right on top of it and then strike your line. Because if you go to the side or wherever maybe you're sitting, you may not be getting exactly on the spot. So that's a problem with using parallel rulers. Now we have a triangles. You need two triangles. The triangle's main advantage is I'm not reliant on the on the compass rows. So what I do with this, I use any meridian. Now I see the triangle, and I have to get it on here. So we have the focal point of what we, uh, where everything comes together. These four lines all come together. That's the focal point. Our course, we're going to be read out of the bottom. What's also nice about triangles, you also have the reciprocal. The reciprocal is the 180 degrees out from wherever you wish. For example, 100, its reciprocal is 280. 130 would be 310. You need two triangles. All I need to do is, I remember my course, I wanted 030. I'm going to put the focal point on any meridian. And then I'm going to swing it around to 0, 030. 0. So I'm on the meridian. I'm on the meridian here. And where the meridian pops out of the bottom of the triangle. So it's 0, 030. 0. Now obviously 0, 030 0 is to the north, northeast if I draw my line that way. But that's where that reciprocal comes in. 210, I'm going that way to the south, southwest. Then I just bring my other triangle up 
and just slide it to there. Bada bing, bada boom. And draw my line. And it's that easy. Okay, now what we want to do, let's say uh, we're, we're on a regular navigation chart now, and uh, we want to go from point A, which is here, to point B, which is up here. All right, we want to know what course that is. And we also want to know, for example, when will a certain buoy be a beam? All right, maybe it'll be this buoy. Maybe the question on your Coast Guard exam will say at what time will buoy BIS be a beam? That's Block Island Sound. So, again, we're going to start off with what you like, your roll bars. And we see something here. We, we, oh, no, it doesn't reach. I guess I need some sort of a straight edge. Well, I can use maybe parallel rulers. So I would come in like so, and like so, point A to point B. And now I need to know what course that is. Well, I guess I just have to move it up. Oh, man, it doesn't reach. So again, I've got to fumble a little bit. Well, now let's try it with the parallel rulers. I line up and I line up and I still see they don't reach. So, because I don't know how to use triangles, this is all that I've got left. So I'll get something like this and get a line up and get it perfectly lined up as best as I can. As one point is here and the other point is there. And now with my parallel rulers, I've got to make it to a compass rose. Well, there's my closest one. So this isn't terrible, terrible. And I can find my course. And my course I could strike, and then I could read three, uh, three, three, two. Okay. Now I can do it with my triangles. Again, same problem they don't reach. So I use the other triangle as, as an extension and bring it up, line up on my point, line up on my point. So there I'm pretty much lined up, okay? I can draw a line. And now with the other triangle, I can slide this one up. And as you see, it hits exactly on, and there's no slippage whatsoever. Okay. Now, I want to know what course that is. So all I got to do is move to my closest meridian. Here's my meridian line coming down. So with this triangle, I slide over to that meridian. Just that little tiny bit now. No chance of slippage. The focal point is on, and I read where it's coming out on, and it's 331332, 332.7. Well, if we looked over here, it was, it was hard to get, get that kind of accuracy. But on the triangle, I can see exactly where it is. Oh, remember we were talking about a beam of the buoy? Where are we going to be a beam? Okay, I slide down. And with the other triangle, slip it to the 90 degree angle and slide it up and strike my mark. So this is the point where I would be a beam by using 90 degrees because that's what a beam is. This is also required for a lot in radar certification when you need to know the CPA of something. So again, triangles, very useful. And uh, once you know how to use them properly, you'll never go back to parallel rulers, slide bars, or whatever fancy gadget they've got out there on the market. Thank you for your time.